Sherry Hansen here. Uh, welcome to another day of wonderful heat. You're just enjoying it so much. I'd like to ask you to subscribe to my YouTube channel, which will, if you subscribe, just click on that. It will notify you when I'm putting up more information that I am seeking out. And my goal is to get to a place where life is just easier. And I don't mean by that that we have fewer challenges because they're never going to go away. But just get to a place where uh, we're, we're up for it and we know how to navigate and we know how to survive change and uh, various, uh, you know, reconfigurations of reality. I am reading to you from The Art of Communicating by Thich Nhat Hanh, and we are now into the part of the book that is called Our Communication is Our Continuation. Every human and every animal communicates. We typically think of communication as the words we use when we speak or write. But our body language, our facial expressions, our tone of voice, our physical actions, and even our thoughts are ways of communicating. Just as an orange tree can produce beautiful orange leaves, blossoms, and fruits, a beautiful human being can create beautiful thoughts, speech, and actions. Our communication is not neutral. Every time we communicate, we either produce more compassion, love, and harmony, or we produce more suffering or violence. Our communication is what we put into the world and what remains after we have left it. In this way, our communication is our karma. The Sanskrit word karma means action, and it refers not just to bodily action, but to what we express with our bodies, our words, and our thoughts and intentions. Throughout our day, we produce energies of thought, speech, and action. We communicate in every moment, either with ourselves or with others. Thinking, speech, and bodily acts are our own manifestations. You are your action. You are what you do, not only what you do with your body, but with your words and with your mind. Karma is the triple action of our thoughts, our speech, and our bodily actions. Thinking is already action. Even if you don't see its manifestation, it is there as powerful energy. Thinking can push you to do or say things that are destructive or it can create a lot of love. Every thought will bring a fruit, sometimes right away, sometimes later on. When you produce a thought of hate, anger, or despair, that thought is a poison that will affect your body and your mind. A thought of hatred or anger can lead one person to hurt another. If you commit a violent act, it means you've been producing thoughts of anger, hatred, and this desire to punish. So thinking is already acting. You don't need to say or do anything in order to be acting. To produce a thought is to act. When you produce a thought that is full of understanding, forgiveness, and compassion, that thought will immediately have a healing effect on both your physical and mental health and on those around you. If you think a thought that is full of judgment and anger, that thought will immediately poison your body, mind, and the people around you. Thinking is the first kind of action because our thinking is the basis for how we affect the world. Our speaking also has a huge effect. If we're capable of speaking and writing with compassion and understanding, we feel wonderful in our bodies and in our minds. 
We don't speak with compassion just so that the person or people we're speaking to will feel better. Our compassionate speech has a healing effect on us, too. After you have been able to say something kind, forgiving, and compassionate, you feel much better. When you write words full of compassion and forgiveness, you feel freer. Even if the person you're writing to hasn't read them yet, even before you mail the letter or send the email or text, you feel better. The person reading your words will also feel your compassion. In the same way, if you speak with anger and violence, if you speak out of a desire to punish, both you and the people who hear your words experience more suffering. Think of a child hearing her parents fighting. Even if the words are not directed at her, the effect of the angry speech is much the same. Speech, the second form of action, can heal and liberate, or it can cause pain and destruction. The third form of action is bodily action. We communicate with our body language, our clenched fists, our open arms, and also with our larger actions, including what we cho choose to show up for, what we do with our day, and how we treat others. If you are able to do something in the line of saving, supporting, protecting, comforting, rescuing, or caring, there is a positive effect right away. And I think this is absolutely brilliant on his part. How do you get to a place where your anger, uh, your feeling that you're somehow a victim, ends up making you a victim because it lowers your energy. It makes you less powerful as one who can care for and support and be kind to others. And in the long run, it's kind of selfish, <laughs> you know? Like, who doesn't want to feel healthier and calmer in their body and more at home and more at peace? And that takes skill. That takes sitting with what you feel like saying, sitting with what you feel like doing, and looking at it and asking, do I want to invest in this or do I want to invest in something that is healing? So we're very blessed to have had this man <laughs> among us on the earth. Um, do subscribe. I ask you to subscribe so that you can see this information, share it, take it out into the world. We're on a mission. And the mission is to be in a place where we are protecting our health, where we are protecting our energy, and where we are living with intention to lower suffering for everyone. Thank you.